Okay, so we are now recording the session. All right. Awesome. Um, so I had sent out in the newsletter, and I've been kind of talking to folks as well, um, that I think there are a couple things you can do in terms of identifying evolution metrics. Mm -hmm. And one is identifying the metrics that are already in place in Augur or in Grimoire Lab mm -hmm. and or in Grimoire Lab. And it might actually make sense to try to map between the two. Mm -hmm. So whatever those evolution metrics might be that are both in both tools, um, by doing that, you, we can then build out the definition of those metrics. Yeah, I agree. They are, already, they are already in practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, I think what Carter and I are capable of doing is um, saying, okay, these are, this is the list of metrics that we have deployed that we would like to draft as chaos metrics. Mm -hmm. And uh, many of those are available in the Augur API. And then perhaps propose um, very brief, sort of lightweight versions of an initial draft for those metrics and submit that to the community and maybe ask Grimoire Lab to do the same. And if they have, if we have overlapping metrics, then we can reconcile those in the meeting and then we can also reconcile the definitions. So we definitely, I'm just saying, I think from a software perspective, we would need a Grimoire Lab person to do that. Yeah, and Georg is on right now. Oh, okay. I saw Georg has joined us. Perfect. I, um, and Marika is also on the call. Perfect. So I think that did you were you on for Matt's suggestion? Because I was looking at the document. Um, I yeah, I know about this suggestion. Yeah. So should we how should we do that? Because there is likely to be overlapping. I would say we just start, honestly. Okay. All right. We just we start kind of you and and Carter, we, I mean, we could just start making a list. We just got to start somewhere. Right. And so maybe we just talk through this and with, with Georg and Manrique online as well. Yeah. We can, and, and maybe, like, maybe it'll be two parts, right? So one is, one is what are, what are the metrics that you and Carter kind of think constitute um, providing insight on evolution. Yeah. Um, number two would be, you know, where Grimoire Lab uh, overlaps, and then perhaps things that Grimoire Lab is doing that Augur is not. Mm -hmm. And then from there, identifying from those metrics, which which are actually evolution related metrics, you know, mm -hmm. so you might throw out, I'll just pick something like age of pull request. We think through it and we're like, actually, that's maybe more appropriate in a value in the value working group. So maybe the first pass right. kind of brought it out as an evolution thing, but maybe in, in reality, we punt that one to another working group. That's all. Let somebody else deal with it. Yeah. Carter, do you suggest, I mean, do, Matt, would you suggest a Google Doc for enumerating those as a starting point? I would just point? suggest this document right here. Yeah, yeah let's use the minutes. Yep. All right. So um, evolution, I'll just evolution, evolution-y <laughs> metrics <laughs> that are currently uh, deployed in Augur. And so maybe we can do a table here. Yeah, I'm just uh, working on that table right now. I'm working on the auger list because we have those classified pretty easily. I mean, yeah. not easily is that uh, I'm basically. And we don't, it doesn't have to be an exhaustive list. I do think that, you know, for each of the releases, we had, what did we have, 12 to 15 total metrics across all working groups? Yeah. I think we. If we go the other way from working what is already in the software. Yeah. That's what Matt that suggested, yeah. That's what I was saying. Exactly what Matt was saying. Did you hear it otherwise? Gary? 
Nope, just confirming. Okay. All right, so we can just start. Okay. No, I'm actually making, basically in our API docs, we have a category called experimental, and I am creating a list from that API doc, like right now, I'll take about three minutes to finish it. So all of a sudden you're gonna see like a giant paste from Sean. Okay. Because um, it's just easier to do it. I didn't want to paste 400 lines of API docs that I was just gonna edit out. And then the Google doc, I love you guys too much to do that to you. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm doing it in a little sheeted, I'm almost done here. And I can I can add the definitions onto these because we have we have uh, lightweight definitions as well. But I very lightweight. Uh, I left those out. And some of these can probably be reduced. Um, so I'm going, why was I so far down the evolution? Bit? Okay, so you have a table. I don't know how my stuff's going to paste in this table, but let's find out. They pasted it in one row. Um, let me see if I can, maybe I can make it. I put it in Excel. How do I make it? Hmm. I just want to keep it simple. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm trying to figure out how to paste without pasting one row at a time, but maybe, you know, there's only 14 here. So maybe I'll just paste one row at a time. And actually there's really only seven because we have these organized, but we have separate API calls for repo and repo groups. And so I'll just put the repo group version in there, knowing that a parameter. What's, what does that mean, aggregate summary? Um, I can actually elaborate on that in okay. just a minute. Do you want a definition of it? Well, so put these, put these. Under metric? Here. Got it. And then we would say check, check, check. I see. And then I'll, okay, got it. And we can take off the repo group part of that. That's just, we have the API documentation. And then we have different endpoints for repo groups and repos. Somebody's faster than me. So, uh, quick change, quick question. The metric that you're putting in here, those are not the ones that we released, right? Correct. Right. These would be the ones that, that we're considering for version two. Now, now, this one, I think we may have released pull request. I don't know if we did release. I don't think we did release pull request acceptance rate, right? actually. Okay. I propose that we add a row at the top or, or several rows with the ones that we have released just to have a complete list. Okay. I'll start with code changes. Yeah. Augur, we have, I have a database table of that I can provide if you really want that information. No, we, no, we, what Georg is pr proposing is just this. Just documenting. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Should we uh, should we add a column in there where we can add a kind of a one sentence or two sentence description if necessary? I have yeah. those. Yeah, I have those descriptions. Let me find that. Maybe part. we could add a column that is the question. That's a good idea. So, uh, just like a for clarity's sake on my part, I guess. Are the metric releases, like, are they backwards compatible in that once we release a metric, it's not going to go away? Is it like we might, like, we reserve the full right to change the composition, like, of all of the metrics? Like, we just redo well, them we, every time we release them? Like, you know, is, is this list only going to grow? Or could we, like, say, oh, we don't think this is evolution anymore and then throw it out? Um, I don't, um, I think we want when we release metrics for those to be very stable. I think right. if they are not, then we will have problems. Right. That makes sense to me. 
And Grimoire, but I think in version two, we, we are able to update metrics that were in version one mm -hmm. as part of that release. And so are we going to, what I suppose another question would be like, how are we going to do, how are we dealing with the, the history? Are we just going to overwrite it and say, this is just now the new version? Are we going to, for every metric, would say, okay, here was the version one definition, here was the version two definition, here's the version three it's, definition? I, I think there are some cases where, for example, I've opened an issue in this working group where we want to add a little bit of clarification. Mm -hmm. I think we actually close and fix that to what's meant. So sometimes the definitions end up with a little bit of ambiguity. Mm -hmm. And when we go to when we've gone to implement them, they've been interpreted in different ways. And so I think those are the kinds of changes that we we welcome. I think changes to the fundamental description and definition of a metric could be disruptive. I think to chaos as a whole, mm -hmm. that it might it might hurt chaos. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what others think of that. Well, I mean, sometimes we have to, yeah, I don't think we want to change fundamentally what the metric is about. I, I guess my point was that sometimes, as an example, one of the risk metrics, there's been a request to provide a better uh, picture of what a software bill of materials might, looks like, might look like. Mm -hmm. And so in version two, we can update that picture. Okay. That's all I, those are the kinds of changes I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And I can't remember if this group is calling them parameters or filters. I think we settled on filters. It is filters. So, and this is, so reviews and reviews accepted and reviews declined. Those are the pull requests, if you recall. Mm. Right, yeah, we had a discussion, I remember that. So this is another sort of, I guess, housekeeping question for me. With respect to the metrics we've already released and then the metrics that um, we're working on defining, like that are implemented already, what, um, like how many of the ones we've already released do we think we need to go back and and edit again? Are they, is it, should we just focus for now on, I mean, for now, I think we should obviously just focus on the new ones that we're doing because we have a lot of work to do there. But apart from that, are we focused you know, is it more like we want to figure out more metrics to add or make the ones that we already have like really, really detailed? I think I think part of it is that um, for Augur and Grimoire Lab both, it's helpful to say, okay, you know, we provide these metrics. So ostensibly people we work with have said they want these metrics. Mm -hmm. And so creating formal chaos definitions around them is helpful. Mm -hmm. um, 
and and it's helpful it's helpful for people trying to consume chaos mm -hmm. because then they know okay these are metrics that are implemented in grimoire lab and in auger and so defining metrics we already have makes sense from uh getting the world to adopt chaos perspective because mm -hmm. instead of only having the metrics that we defined we also then I mean, and I think almost all of the metrics that we defined are implemented in one tool or another. Mm -hmm. They're all apparently yeah. implemented in Grimoire Lab. Yeah, and I'm like, uh, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is, and actually, like in, yep, yep, yeah, we have all of the ones that were released as well. That's great, actually. That's actually, that looks great. I mean, uh, if you think about it, these the ones that we released are the ones that I think each, you know, all the stakeholders in chaos have always, they ask for first, mm -hmm. especially in evolution. And so, of course, they're the ones that uh, get implemented in software first. And we wanted to define them first so that they- well, seeing them implemented is nice. Yeah. Yeah, I was too busy making sure that I found the definitions that oh. we had for the ones we've implemented. And of course, there is no, can, these are just how we have defined them, right? Like whatever we call these metrics, we can decide these are filters on other metrics that already exist, um, for example. Yeah, but I think that definition has, I mean, that was where a lot of the work was between folks uh, yeah. at Grimoire Lab and Augur coming up with a consistent way to talk about these. So in, in my mind, when I, see, when I see an X by any of those metrics in that table, mm -hmm. along with the question, me that does mean that Augur and Grimoire Lab are actually deploying them the same way. Technically, they're different, mm -hmm. like the engine under the hood. Yeah. But the way that metric is understood should be the same in both. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think each of them, I think each tool may have filters that are that exist in addition to those specified. Yeah, 100%. Right? The filters could be unique to the tool. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, Sean, yeah. you, go ahead. Yeah, I, I just uh, saw that we had uh, Daniel as well yeah. join. Oh, hi, Daniel. Yeah, I invited him and Enrique. So, to clarify what we are doing right now is in the minutes, we started a document, a table where we want to add all of the metrics that we already have implemented. There are evolution metrics. If they are defined in the working group or not. And yeah. so where you can help the most is to add at the bottom of the list mm -hmm. all of the metrics you know Grimoire Lab already provides. That are evolution metrics. That's the mm -hmm. probably a critical. Evolution E. Evolution, evolution S. <laughs> <laughs> can't be determined yeah. later. Yeah. Re regarding to this, um, so uh, uh, evolutionary metric means basically potentially anything that evolves over time. Or no, it's uh, a uh, metric that you would kind of, you personally, would kind of mm -hmm. see as helping reveal the growth, maturity, and decline okay. of a project. And so just use your best judgment at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, so example, for example, um, there are some metrics that likely span repo groups. Um, in our API, we classify the fork counts, uh, the language, the computing language, the license counts. We classify those under risk, mm -hmm. and I think some of those are proposed under risk. However, it would be completely reasonable to, you know, I think we know at the end of this process we're going to end up with a matrix where some of the metrics are useful across working groups. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a question of which working groups are actively working on defining them right now. And I think probably that's an activity for 
uh, Matt and I and others. I think you are now the co-chair of the chaos. Well, we don't know about that yet. Oh, no, no, we don't. <laughs> he was the only candidate, so I... Oh, I, I just... <laughs> I did put I mean, an email asking for the results. But. I mean, Putin doesn't lose. I don't think, uh, I don't think Georg's going to lose. Not, that's a bad, com I'm not trying to draw that contrast in any, in any pejorative way. I'm just saying, like, he's, if there's only one candidate up for election, it's unlikely that. We uh, understand. Yeah, Georg did not have his opposition jailed or killed. I'm just. Oh, okay. that we know of. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was, I considered running, but I thought I had, I had greater wisdom suggest that I lack the time. You were just afraid of being jailed and imprisoned. I, well, <laughs> I also know I would lose to you, so I didn't want that, that on my record in case I decided to run for higher office one day. <laughs> so, Daniel, the idea here is just yeah. going through what you think, and even, even if it's not the full slate of things that are in Grimoire Lab, because obviously we're not going to capture everything right mm -hmm. out of the gate. For well, not, maybe not in the meeting. Right, but we, yeah, sure. Even for the second, even for version two, we won't capture everything because there's just going to be a limited. Every metric that is below on that table, every metric that is below those that are released, are going to require work. Yeah, and so the reality is, is for version two, we may expect about the same number. What was it? Two, four, six, eight, ten in the first release. Mm -hmm. so, can, I, uh, can I show you something about that we have in Grimoire Lab? So then you give feedback. Yeah, of course. Then, okay, so let me share my screen. Uh, just a second. Uh, my screen is one, I guess. Do you yep, see? I can see that, yeah. Like a list of CSV files, right? Yeah, breaks. Yeah, so let me let me show the URL. What's a crate? Crates are coming from Mozilla. So this is what they are using to, uh, and I don't remember uh, too much, uh, all of the Rust uh, projects, let's say, they have. So they, they call these crates, which is kind of a package manager. It's a package manager, it's a package manager for Rust projects. Uh, they wanted to know information uh, about the packaging. OK. I see. So, uh, so, so like, the, the, like oh, the standard. Sorry. So if I want to create a standard metric or indicator, I might want to use package manager since it's more general, right? If hmm. I'm understanding like what that is. Yeah. So the question here is: This is these are. Uh, I think it's not 100% complete, but as you can see, we have a CSV file for each of the data sources. Um, so then that means that we can potentially, from an evolution point of view of a project. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but we can assume that uh, uh, projects with uh, several data sources in place means that they are using several pieces of infrastructure. So that means that they are kind of mature or evolving, or you know, this kind of thing. So the, 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 the very name of the uh, data source might be something, might, may mean something. But then at the same time, if we go for each of them, like for instance, Maxilla, uh, this is a CSV file where you can see all of the fields that we have for each of the uh, each of the data sources. And so this is an index in Elasticsearch. So potentially, each of these might be visualized in an evolutionary chart. But mm -hmm. as we want to take the really high quality metrics for this, not everything works. So, but there are several of them that we can have as the number of changes in issues in this case over time, number of comments or components they have that they are working at or that they have back reports, um, labels, eh, probably not, perhaps platform priority or products, projects, and some others. So from what I want to bring here is that from all of these data sources that are already supported, at least five, 10 fields can be easily thought as part of evolutionary uh, discussion. So the question here is, does it make sense to you? Because if it makes sense to you, then we can simply start with a well-known skip, it happens some others, and then we can start digging into the others. So, so when you say there's five to 10, say that again? Hmm. Yeah, so uh, in Maxilla, we had 
several fields. If we go to Confluence, for instance, which is the wiki for the Atlassian stack, we have things like the authors or organizations, okay. and then we can have this value over time because we have the time here in this field. Um, in the same way that we have authors creating on, or editing wikis, we can have organizations or we can have things as uh, the status or tags or, mm -hmm. or the type because they can write wikis or they can write blogs or and so on. So, and this happens across all of the files that you can see here, a CSV file. So, I mean, we have like 30 or 40 different indexes and then we have like five or 10 fields that are, that might be part of evolutionary discussion. So it's doable, yeah, take, it, it takes time. I don't know yeah, if this so is you're wrong. suggesting you that each one of these, that you have maybe 30 indices, mm. and then from those, there may be five, five to 10 fields that mm. would kind of be evolutionary, uh, evolutionary in yeah. nature. That would kind of help reveal or provide transparency on the growth, maturity, and decline of a project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's exactly what, I think that's exactly what this exercise is about. Okay. And so we just need your, at this point, really just your best discretion, mm -hmm. Daniel, as to what those five to 10 might be. Yeah. So, okay. So then this we... would be based on your experience of working with people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, this yeah. is. So the way we are now splitting information in, in Viteria in this case is uh, through kind of type of data source. But then we are focusing the discussion on development activity. Um, this is kind of the big areas we can analyze. And this includes uh, data sources as Git repositories or Gary repositories, or basically uh, development and code review process. Then we have some other for ticketing systems. So then where we include uh, Maxilla, Jira, uh, I don't know, Redmine, all of this. And we have some others for CICD. Um, and then we have some others for, I don't know, uh, social networks as perhaps meetups, but kind of this, Twitter, this stuff. So if we are, let's say, a small project and we are start from scratch, perhaps we have our GitHub account and that's all. But then if we want to start growing, from an, from an evolutionary point of view, the infra we need is like, okay, probably we need some communication channel. So what are we gonna use? Uh, what do you think about this course, mailing list, etc.? So chaos happens, something like this. Then we started to grow in the number of mailing lists, uh, but we added mailing lists, right? And then we decided to go for whatever. So um, this is how I see uh, communities grow. And then at some point, perhaps we have even meetups, chaos meetups, I don't know. Maybe that makes sense at some point. So this is another way of measuring perhaps maturity from a community because there's a, an interest around there. I don't know. Sure. I mean, I, to me, that would, what you just described would, sounds like a single metric potentially, which is the growth in the number of communication channels. Was that correct? Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, that would be a, that would be an interesting metric to me. So then perhaps what we can do with Grimoire Lab is to go through the several data sources and indexes, choose like the top five or 10 or, or three, because yeah. there are too many, and then try to have those in a table and say, okay, this is what you can have. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, I think honestly, as we've often said in the past, that the work in the chaos project is is meant to improve transparency for people. We're not going to solve everything. So if we can articulate even just three metrics or five metrics, that's a positive step in the right direction. Hmm. So whatever those might be. So perhaps it's the ones that are currently deployed in Augur. I see that Augur has a list and it looks like there is some overlap if I look at this. Yeah, I'm sure there is. So I mean, maybe on it's how do you see this? In the, do you see the table? A little bit farther down in the notes. Yeah, go in the notes. You see that table? Yeah. So basically what this is, is the top 10 rows are, all of these rows are things that were released in version one. Mm -hmm. And Grimoire Lab and 
Augur have both deployed them. Mm -hmm. And so if you scroll down, mm -hmm. this is a, a list of currently deployed metrics in Augur that are kind of in the evolution world. Mm -hmm. And then also deployed metrics that are in that are deployed in Grimoire Lab in the evolution kind of yeah. way of thinking. And so you can see here that there are, it appears to be five metrics that I highlighted on that page. Mm -hmm. Somebody's ready. <laughs> so what that is. Something there. What is that? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Looks like someone's password. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was checking that they saying that the top committer returns a list of contributors contributing n percent of all commits with the filter n percent. And in Grimoire Lab, that is possible to be done with n equals to 80, 50, yeah. 20, 15, and 5. So I don't know how to write that in Grimoire <laughs> Lab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> So uh, that makes much more sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Again. And so I think one of the, the hopes is, is that as chaos, as a project, as a whole moves forward, that as we put forward metric definitions, we also have them deployed in the software. Yeah. Um, do you think, I mean, it, it's not going to work for all of the data sources, but perhaps we can add like, data sources supported? Just a, just a comment, for instance, a number of contributors. Um, I don't know your specific definition of contributor in, in this working group, but if we assume that a contributor might be someone doing whatever in any data source, then we can say we can measure the number of contributors like yeah. uh, across all of these data sources and then we have a list of them. So that, that's, exactly, that's exactly, so then in the evolution working group, that's exactly what the work would be. So. Okay. So how, if we were, so in the case of, um, where were you, number of contributors? Sean or Carter, do you? So we have, we have contributors that are people who do pull requests, issues, issue comments, hmm. commits. I think that's, is there anything else, Carter? I think those are the four main places that we get people from. Oh, Carter, you're on mute. And it's, it's probably the commenters that you're on me. Not... Um, I think that's it. And pretty much if we see them do anything on GitHub in a repository, we add them as a contributor, even if it's just commenting an issue or opening an issue. Um, but I, for, I think it, our definition is actually pretty much on par with somebody doing it, something in a data source, because mm. our data sources primarily are GitHub and Git. And we just conclude everybody's doing something they're now a contributor. They're adding some, some value to the project. So in terms of defining the metric that would be number of contributors, this row, that's the discussion that would have to occur is what constitutes a contributor. And so in the, the hope would be is that the way that the folks at Augur think about a contributor and the way that thing folks at Grimoire Lab think about a contributor is actually the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so then the definition is deployed consistently across the two tools. And we don't have to solve what a contributor is now, but that would be a candidate. This is really what happened on all of the prior, the prior metrics. Mm -hmm. So for example, if we talk about what a review is, Sean and Jesus would just spend a ton of time <laughs> coming to agreement as to what constitutes a review. Well, and that, that one became somewhat confusing because a review is really our word for pull request in mm -hmm. the GitHub part. Yeah, it's like a standard, process. yeah. And then there's a software reviews that are implemented differently on different platforms that are diff different things that we'll have to label differently. But that metric was the coming kind of the coming the the, agree, the agreement point between the ways that different people a pull request or a review in that case. Yeah, what I don't know is how to scale this. 
in terms of what? Say that in more detail. Oh, yeah. So probably the, the table right now as it is, uh, it's like uh, some reviews, some issues. Uh, this table is probably not scalable by itself, if that's your concern. Yeah. Yeah, this is yeah. just about trying to, for a while, we, we have a lot of moving parts. Hmm. So there's a lot of things that Grimoire Lab is doing, and there's a lot of things that Augur are doing. So all this table is trying to do is just bring, bring people together at some point. Hmm. And so if, it, from this point, we could say, listen, we're going to actually take a look at this one that I'm highlighting pull request acceptance rate. That's a metric that we agree we want to have. We, as a group here, agree that we want to release in version two. The work then on doing that would actually occur not in this, ta not in this table, but in a different document. So it would actually be scaled out there, if that's your concern. So this table, I don't think, I agree, this table won't scale. It's just a way to think about what is currently deployed in Augur, what is currently deployed in Grimoire Lab from an evolution. It gives us kind of a candidate set of things that yes. would be good to define since they already exist and we can point people to a standard metric. And good point. So I think that's the idea. If I'm that is 100% the idea. And then the real work lies in <laughs> actually writing up the markdown file to define that metric yep that actually defines that metric so example new contributors or no, i'm sorry number of contributors seems easy out of the out of the box maybe but quite likely the way that it's interpreted by the folks that are working at auger and the way that it's interpreted by folks working in more lab is is different it's probably nuanced. I mean, I don't i yeah, suspect they're not like materially like fundamentally different things but there yeah. might be different stuff we count, like, you know, when we first defined commits, I think there was a, a lot of discussion about what constitutes a commit. Correct. Um, and so that I doubt there's anything that's as hairy as that. <laughs> so we've climbed the highest mountain already, I think. <laughs> uh, I have a question. Can we also? measure like the, the number of contributors per release uh, cycle in such a way that if we look contributors across different releases, we can see at the activities. Because in, at some point, a contributor might be very engaged at one release. At some point, the activities might drop or things like that. It's also interesting to see how a contributor uh, the, con the activity of a contributor is spread across several releases. In such a way, it can also help us to, you know, like other matrices like retention, abandoning, and things like that. It can explain. You know. it's, I would suspect that that could be done trying to identify an individual across releases. I think there were a couple metrics that you had mentioned in there, Armstrong. Yeah, um, yeah, I mentioned also like retention and abandoning because those are also metrics. Sometimes we might notice that somebody abandoned, but we, it, is, it might be difficult to know exactly why. Yeah, I, I don't know that either Grimoire Lab or... August. I mean, we... If we if we were interested in understanding abandonment of uh, uh, the example of pull request or an issue or was being abandoned in Armstrong's case, okay. Like I was just saying, like if we could capture, since we were talking about uh, contributors, you know, because sometimes we might just say, okay, this person is contributing to this project and that is it, but inside that same project. If that project is doing releases, let's say three months, or six months, we might say, okay, in this particular release, this person had this kind of contribution in this release. We just keep those releases across different, sorry, we keep contributions across different releases. So at some point, 
it might be increasing, it might be constant, it might be decreasing. You know, it's helpful to see those kind of information on contributors across different releases because releases will be like the measuring rod, like the measuring rod to see the activity of the contribution. I just saw your note, Manry. Um, so I, I, uh, Armstrong, I'm listening to you talk. I think that it sounds like this would be a new metric that you're proposing or metrics. Would you, would it be possible for you to post this in as an issue? Okay, no problem. Yep, just so we could capture it. Okay. But it's yes. good to hear your ideas because maybe they are already implemented. So yep. if you have more ideas, or, or, or implementable, them, but we can certainly talk about them right now. And I would include them in the list. We just don't have. Ex I don't know who just removed them from the list. Uh, yeah, I, I did. I wanted to write stuff down before I forgot it because I was like, I had an idea in my head. My apologies. Didn't mean to confuse anybody. So to Georg's point too, Armstrong, if you just want to drop that into the list. Okay, let me check the list and see. Okay. I can put the ones that I uh, I took out in there. So the ones that I had I had put were um, number of total repository contributors per release. That's just all of the ones who, see. you know, however we define yep. that maybe they made a commit between the last release and the one we're looking at then there could be like the number of new repository contributors, like they haven't made a commit in a release before the one we're looking at. And then the number of returning repository contributors per release, as in I've made a commit within this release and also one prior. So that could give us an idea of how many new people did we get this time? Did we see a drop in the number of people who came back? And then just how many overall do we have? Um, just off the top of my head. Mm, I'm, I'm thinking the way we are actually scaling in Viteria to, well, or in, yeah, in Viteria to show the capabilities of Viteria Analytics to our customers. And the way we are really doing this is through a couple of processes. First is creating a specific dashboards for them. Uh, so that means that we are not working at the level of metric, but at the level of use case or more generic, more high level scenarios. And for this, we can scale much better because we have around 60 or 70 dashboards, each of them with a specific use case. Um, and the other is through specific consultancy where we sit down with our customers and then we understand what they are doing and following similar goal question metric thing. Yep. Then we bring some new questions that might be answered in some cases with a new dashboard or perhaps doing a report or whatever. But the way we are doing this is through having use cases. Uh, and those use cases may be an aggregation of certain metrics. Yes. Um, and this is how we are scaling, I guess. I would suspect in this case that if you have 60 to 70 dashboards, it's quite possible that one metric lives in multiple dashboards. Exactly. Yeah. And you, you just aggregate them in different ways based on the particular use case. Hmm. Hmm. I don't, I don't, does, do you think that precludes us from trying to define what those are? I don't think I understand the verb preclude. Uh, does it prevent? Sorry, <laughs> Sorry okay. that was my, my mistake. I don't, I don't think that prevents us from still working to define what those granular metrics are. Oh, no, 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 it's okay. okay. So I, I just wanted to bring the... Yeah, no, that's good. Thinking about this, how we were doing this. Okay. Mm. So thinking about that, maybe going to dashboards uh, that we have and looking which dis visualizations are evolutionary-ish, evolutionary? Evolutionary-ish, I like that here. <laughs> <laughs> of everything. ish Yeah. Um, then we can backtrack to what are the core metrics that built out that visualization. 
and we can define those metrics, the core ones and the composite metrics. Mm -hmm. So instead of going to the schema, maybe working at the higher level of what people actually want to see might be a different approach. So I just posted one of the, but you, you know them, GitLab, Bitrge.io or chaos.bitrge.io. Mm -hmm. And so this is a dashboard based on a use case, is that correct? Yes. Those are the things that GitLab wants to see. Okay. And so, I mean, it sounded like your suggestion would be taking a look at these, are the, the, the rectangles, are those called panels? The rectangles are visualizations. Visualizations, okay. The whole page is one panel okay. and the collection of all these panels, the entire system is the dashboard. Okay. So the visualizations, what you're suggesting, at least from the uh, the Grimoire Lab side of things, is taking a look at these visualizations and asking yourself, which of these are evolutionary in nature? Yes. Is that right? And then that can be an atomic metric or a composite metric, and then we can backtrack and define if it's a composite metric, also the elements, the sure. metrics. You, you, you know what I want to see on your dashboard, Gary? I, I want to see. I want to see the organizational context. I think I'm looking at chaos, the project, but it doesn't tell me that anywhere. You're looking at GitLab. At the top, it should say next to the owl whether it's. Oh, it does. Okay, it does. It does say chaos. It's um. Okay. It says GitLab. Mine says, I must have, I you clicked on the- I posted both links. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Because I, I clicked the GitHub, GitLab link and maybe I just have a browser cache issue, but I think when I hit the GitLab link, I got the chaos one. It's two different links. And I think- Oh, uh, okay. I did the same thing, Sean. <laughs> All right, now, now I'm following. So, Georg, to your point, whether they're atomic metrics or composite metrics, even looking at this list that's in the table in the minutes, there are some that are, we have both in there. Which is, I, the point being, I think it's fine whether we consider a metric as a composite or, a, or an atomic. So, for example, the one I'm highlighting right now, aggregate summary. That is clearly a composite metric. Yeah. My point was not about whether they're classified as one or the other. Yeah. I want a, a different approach at figuring out which one, which metrics we can focus on. Because I think looking at this schema Daniel shared, there are so many possibilities on how to combine them. But actually looking at the dashboards that companies are looking at gives us a good set of metrics that are proven in the wild. Yeah, no, I agree. I think the one hesitation on the aggregate metrics, so again, if I look at that one that I highlighted, this one, I'll put it in the chat for folks, if you're not in the document, that one, aggregate summary. It would require definitions of what a watcher, a star, and a fork and a commit and a committer and a pull request merged are. Just because it's contingent on metrics, <laughs> this aggregate metric. Yeah, right. So the, the metrics are kind of the, the most um, discrete piece of information and then the, the filters are different. Well, well, or the aggregates, the aggregates are a collection of these atomic or singular metrics. Yes, yes. And if we don't clearly define the atomic metrics, then the, the aggregations aren't well, well defined either, just by default. Yeah, true.
I'm not sure if this exercise was helpful for people or not. I think it, for me, it's helpful because I think it gives us uh, an inventory of metrics that, you know, can be defined that will then create greater alignment with the software. And I think it also opens up a bunch of new discussions that we can have around those metrics about which things are the discrete metric and how do we define the aggregations. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think, I think it's very helpful. Um, at least for me, I, maybe I'm the only person. I actually find it helpful, but I, I don't want to talk about other people. I feel the same way. Just having a, an inventory of even other metrics that I, that we haven't thought about is, is very useful for, you know, how can we improve going forward? And I, I agree. I find it very helpful. Okay. Folks on the Grimoire Lab side of things. I mean, I, I think it, this takes a village, right? And if this doesn't help orient work around evolution for all. I'm going to defer to Monica and Daniel. But if it doesn't work, how, how it can be improved to move the evolution working group forward. So, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, when, um, so we've tried to do this like in the early years in Vitoria. It was a bit of a headache, but mainly ah. because things tend to be, we were kind of evolving really quick. So we were adding a lot of data sources and so on. So uh, it was, it, it, that required a lot of time. So the way we see we were producing value for the industry was through the presentation of certain use cases. And, and for this, uh, the aggregation of certain metrics. So when we add several data sources, when we merge certain metrics into one thing, use case, it seems to be more valuable from that perspective. So just an example, the velocity metric, I don't remember it was pull request versus commit or kind of this. Um, but there are probably, so we are, we are uh, using two metrics into one to define a new one. And then this seems to be kind of a good indicator for yeah. people. So then having that implemented, I think it's more useful than having commits on the one hand and pull requests on the other. Agreed. Uh, the point is about defining all of those use cases because our next step was let's define use cases. And then we have the dashboards. But again, we are not covering what everyone thinks is useful. And basically, if, <laughs> if you see something or a dashboard, people have an opinion. So then it's like, hey, I have an opinion. So I would like to see this here and not this there. Uh, so our final decision was, okay, let's have a really flexible dashboard that everyone can play with and they can build their own thing. <laughs> This is what we are trying to, to have. Uh, Even in the case that you're talking about, at some point you have to define what a contributor is, right? Yeah. There, there has to be a definition of that. Yeah. And I understand that there's, was it contributor plus pull request or commits and pull requests for velocity? So depending who you ask, active contributor, uh, something different. So I, I actually, I agree with you that velocity is a more insightful, more revealing metric than pull requests alone or committers alone. That was, I think that was one of your points, correct? Mm -hmm. But I still, I, I think there, there has to be a definition for pull requests and there has to be a definition for contributors. And if the way that Grimoire Lab handles contributors is different than the way that Augur handles contributors, that's a problem to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we don't want that. No, and we don't want that. So what the metrics release 
to me is about is just creating that common definition. So when folks in the industry say, it's great that you're aggregating these to velocity, but what do you mean by a contributor? Yeah. Then the, we can simply point to the metric and say, here's the standard definition for a contributor. That's all. And so the accumulation of those, I agree, is more valuable than any anything alone. I 100% agree with you. Um, and we can release, we've talked about releasing these use cases as well. And we've put together use cases. That's been a slower process. Mm. But those use cases are, in my mind, fully contingent on standardized definitions of metrics. They rely on them. Then perhaps another option is to go for the most uh, interesting basic metrics. Yes. And for request. I'm not trying to be complete. I agree. Um, and then if it happens that we have some a more complex metrics based on some basics one, but some of them don't exist, then we can go and create a new one. Yeah. Well, I have to leave as well. Okay. <laughs> I imagine that. <there's, laughs> I, I actually, the last statement you said, I fully agree with that. So identifying what are those most interesting basic metrics. Hmm. Yeah. Um, just, uh, I, I think I'm listening to your comment and probably I don't know if I have even time for just one minute to comment. <laughs> actually, <laughs> I, I think the way to scale this is, as you said, not starting by the foundations of the things that build the things. I mean, that build whatever we want to build here. Um, basically starting by, okay, let's define the basic statements or the basic foundation for open source uh, development. Like we have contributors, we have maintainers or, or whatever, a commit, what's a contribution, and that's it. So that's the first definition uh, uh, as, as an industry member, I would say, I would expect, I would be expecting like, okay, mm -hmm. this is what we are gonna measure. We are gonna measure contribution. So what's a contribution? And then we, once we have that is okay, for evolutionary point of view, <laughs> what are the things we need to measure? And probably we start with very basic things. The, the CI the thing seen here is most of the people in this call are technical people, so we know that we can measure everything. We can measure even the pressure of the air to know, okay, I'm under pressure or not for evolution, <laughs> something like that. So probably another thing is let's start by simple things that we know that works, that we all have some, and probably for next releases, we can also uh, try to engage the industry. Okay, tell me what does growth means to you? Yes. Because we already have everything this, the, defined, we know our contribution, so probably for you it's like, I only need to know how many people is contributing to my core review process. Yes. Okay, let's go for that. And I think that could be a way to scale for two cases surveys. I don't know, but some kind of uh, interesting group are, are around that. So, yeah, I'll make, I know you guys have to go to another meeting, yeah. but what I hear is, is at some point focusing on the basic building blocks, but it's kind of a secondary step asking people how those can be aggregated in ways that are meaningful to them, which I think starts hitting what Danny's talking about as well with those, those composites or those aggregates. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting in a sense that people don't need, don't, need to think about which data is already there because yeah. uh, from the technical point of view we always focus on the data it's like okay we go there oh it's ready data go for ready data and go for twitter and go for okay forget about that what does it mean growth for you what makes ma meaningful to measure growth maturity or decline what does it mean and then let's try to build that sentence yes. that statement from the industry into questions and then into metrics and then we have the metrics Yes, and here are the well building blocks that we have that That's you can it. use. Yes. Okay. <laughs> this is good. This was very helpful to me. Thank hey. you. Thanks for the conversation, everybody. Oh. You're welcome. All right. Till all right. Talk to y'all later. Bye. 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 Yeah.